and we're down at this beautiful little spot here on this good markets Cook coast water is absolutely fantastic in the background yeah west has been blown for a day or two it's just what we wanted white water is rolling in looking fantastic let me tell you something if we don't catch hotties today we'll be very unlucky but i'm going to try a little lob bait with chocker my brother's trying pink prawn so let's get there and catch some fish A pushing tide usually works best for bronze bream. So find a spot with lots of seagrass and as the tide pushes the white water over it, you should get fish. The bronze bream can be a very sneaky feeder and sometimes they will grab the bait and pull you down while other times they'll pick the bait up and quickly bring you in. Here Lando's got a stunning little bronze bream You'll notice that even though they have such small mouths, if you use a number one size hook, you'll still have a very high hookup ratio. Just remember to use a good quality hook, otherwise a larger fish will straighten it. What we've got here, I'd just like to show the, the guys what we look for when we, when we fish for hotties. First of all, we're looking for areas with uh, seaweed, because hotties eat seaweed, but they also love the baits we're using, which is prawns and sand mussel, etc. Now what we look for, we're looking for reefs, with white water, constant white water. Depending where you fish, certain times it'll be a west wind, other times it'll be a east wind. I mean, this particular area we're fishing a west wind. Now, if you look over to my left here, where you see is here, you've got fantastic white water that stays on the water all the time. Doesn't have to be too deep. You don't want to fish those big, deep blue areas where it's rocky because you're not going to catch hotties there. You want to fish reefy areas where they can hide in the reefs and hide away from the predators. Now this particular spot that we're fishing you now, which we'll show you just now, is absolutely perfect for and tot. A soft chocker bait is very effective for hotties. And sometimes, when all other baits just don't seem to work, it's chocker that does the trick. The secret is to use fresh chocker and hammer it with the mallet so that it's very soft on the hook. Notice how Chad always applies a constant pressure to the line to make sure that there's never any slack. Otherwise, there is a very good chance that you will lose the fish if it's not properly hooked. Well, these potties are duck, duck, duck. Land on our two casts, each four fish. Lively fat hotty. Pink prawn, chocker. Doesn't matter what you throw at the moment, the water's perfect. Beautiful rolling waves coming in there, just what the hotties like. Now those hotties that I've been catching here um, in the last couple of hours, they love sand mussel, which I've got in my hand here, that's what I'm using now. They love pink prawn, love sand prawn. They eat a bit of red bait, they like a choco blob bait, but um, they're fantastic fish to catch. Most of the fish you're going to catch are going to be between a kilo and two and a half kilos. A big hottie is about three kilos, which we got some nice ones the last time. We've got some of about two, two and a half kilos in the pool there now. But um, really, it's just getting fantastic time for the hottie now. I'm putting on a really big piece of sand muscle and I'm expecting a mother. The bronze bream is a shoal fish and sometimes there can be over a hundred fish feeding in a single area. So it's not uncommon to catch a couple of fish in a few minutes. Sometimes you only wait a second or two before a pickup. The bronze bream is mainly a summer fish and in winter large shoals have been spotted by spear fishermen on the deeper reefs along our coastline. It's amazing fishing, cast for cast hearty. You just can't go wrong. You're hitting the, you're hitting the water, Reading your slack up, but then the hot is already biting, pulling you down. Fantastic fishing. You know, this is a small hottie, so I don't want to keep the fish, but often if you let these fish go in the gully that you're fishing, then you spook the shoal. So what we've got here, if you look down in the pool here, this pool is full of hotties that we've been catching. You can see the fins going. So I put them in this pool, it's a deep little pool, and then what I do is just before I go, I go home, I let them go. So that's just a little tip, if you want to catch these the whole day, or the whole afternoon, just put them in a pool, keep your bag limit if you want to eat them, and then let the rest go. When your line goes slack, it usually means that the fish has brought your bait in. The best thing to do in this situation is to reel up all the slack as fast as possible and quickly set the hook. 
This is a great tip that should really improve your hookup rate. Of all the baits to choose from, the most effective one for bronze bream seems to be the pink prawn. Don't confuse this pink prawn with the one that burrows in the sandbanks of rivers. It's the swimming prawn that you eat in restaurants. A common occurrence is when you have fishermen using chocker and sand mussel and someone else casts a pink prawn bait amongst them, the hotties become pink prawn specific and will only feed on that bait. Who knows, maybe they just have expensive taste. Uh, I took a throw of about probably 70 meters. Next minute it just ran me in and then I hit, I was fucked. Nice little hottie on a pink prawn. When fishing for bronze bream, your standard rig that we've been using for the last 25, 30 years, we use a 1-0 hook, it's a bait keeper, chemically sharpened hook. In general, you're using sinkers from sort of four to six ounce. And the rig that we use as well is a sliding sinker. So your sinker goes onto your main line, then you tie your hook on. And it's as simple a rig as that. There are a couple of other rigs that we can show you, but that's the most simple rig that you can possibly um, use. This is what the whole sliding rig looks like for bronze green. Here, Chad has prepared a bait consisting of a prawn and chocker mix. This seafood a la carte is a favorite bronze bream snack. As the tide pushes, you generally have to move back with it unless you want to stand underwater. The nice thing about bronze bream though, is that they will move in with the tide and feed quite close to the side. This is where many fishermen make the mistake of casting too far over the feeding fish. So don't feel like you have to cast out your entire spool every time. You would be amazed if you knew just how close to the edge they feed at high tide. There's one particular spot there. And if you throw in that area, you pass every single shot, Alan. Yeah, every throw. It's not only about, what, 50, 60 meters out, eh? Yeah, it's a short throw. Short throw, yeah. On chocker and corn mix. Most anglers exhibit the habitual tendency to return to their favorite fishing spots and rarely venture anywhere else. Sometimes it's good to move out of your comfort zone and explore other fishing spots. You might be pleasantly rewarded. The exciting thing about fishing is that you never know what type and size of fish you're going to catch. This element of surprise is what keeps us anglers coming back time and time again. Yeah, I missed the hottie there, and 15 seconds later, this little cracker picked me up. You never know what you're going to catch in this particular area, but uh, I'm going to stick with hotties for a while. It was not a long wait before something big grabbed the soft chocker bait that Chad had prepared. This fish put up a good fight and was very determined to stay in the water. This is a beautiful hottie. We're clapping the hotties in like the one to two kilo range. And uh, just before it's getting dark here, yeah, the water's really looking great. Nice big chocker bait, they love chocker bait, these big hotties. This thing flattened me, absolutely flattened me. Lando was taking off a hottie about a kilo and a half. So we've had great fishing, but this is a, this is a proper hottie, this is a beauty. <laughs> 